Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Massimo Banzi. I'm the co-founder of this project called Arduino, uh, which is also a company. And I want to tell you a little bit about, again, what it means to enable people to be able to innovate with technology. So I want to start with a story that I like to tell. This is something that happened to me at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. So I get on a taxi. The taxi starts. And after a few seconds, the driver stops and says, are you the guy from Arduino? And I say, uh, yes, how do you know? And then the guy starts telling me a story about him you know, using this tool I'm going to tell you about, Arduino, to invent some kind of a dolly for like a video shooting. And this happened. So the guy starts to make a video selfie while we are driving to the streets of Barcelona. And you can see I'm smiling just because I'm terrified about the idea that we could just have like a big accident. Because the guy is also, whole, you see that book is waving? That's the book that comes in this kit that we make that teaches people how to use this Arduino tool. So what I think was very, what hit me is that there was a taxi driver in Barcelona that was trying to learn about electronics while he was waiting for clients in line. And he was looking at this book and he was watching videos on YouTube. So that gave me the perception, the real perception, that now the way people learn about technology, it's very, very different from what used to be in the past. How people innovate, how people come up with ideas, it's very different. And it's all down to the fact that we change the tools. We just make different tools. We treat people that have no background in technology, in software, hardware, in a different way. And magically, they have ideas and they start to build them out. So there was this big, this is part of like a bigger community called the maker community, which is, this is a picture from, a, from an event in New York where somebody started to capture some of the aspects of this kind of maker, they call it maker movement. I think it's just, you know, it's just a bunch of people doing very cool stuff which are just outside maybe sometimes of the classic technology world. It started off as me trying to find a tool that would make it simpler for my students. This is a design school in the northwest of Italy where I used to teach. How do you make, how do you enable somebody that has no background in software or hardware to be able to build prototypes with electronics in just a few weeks? And sort of the physical manifestation of that, it's this little computer the size of a credit card, very low power computer, but very easy to use compared to what was available before. So the idea was, let's not try to change the way professionals do development. Can you find a way that can increase the size of people who are interested in hardware by making tools that are closer to them? And this is kind of goes, I think, with my general interest in this idea that I like to enable anybody to innovate with technology by making complex technologies uh, simple to use. And I think that's, you know, there's a lot of examples in technology where we took complex stuff and we made it simpler to use. We automatically increased the number of people. And, you know, the web is a great example. There, are some, there were some tools at the beginning in the web, I remember when I was very young, you could just do view source and any website was in front of you and you could just learn from somebody else and build an amazing website. And there are billion dollars companies that were maybe started by people that learn by doing view source and just looking at other people's work. So this accessibility, the fact that you can get knowledge anywhere and you don't really need to sign NDAs, sign up for special contract, so you have to go through like a complex process, enables a lot of creativity that even children now are doing electronics. And it's very interesting because this kid that you see here, it's a kid from the Bay Area. He was just learning about how to blink some LEDs with Arduino. A 10-year-old, he successfully kick-started his own smartwatch platform based on Arduino. So when 10-year-old children can do smartwatches, then the way we relate to hardware and building things is, changes radically. 
I'll show you just a few examples of what people are building. So Arduino was very, very popular with artists, designers, big companies are using to prototype hardware. So for example, this is a small startup in Italy that made a glove for people that cannot speak. So they do sign language and the hardware, which is based on Arduino, understands the signs and then speaks the words through a phone. So, so it translates sign language into spoken words. Or this is a um, self-tying shoelaces that somebody built, you know, based on uh, Back to the Future. So this is the idea. You have an idea, you see something you want it, you can actually build it yourself. Or this is a, an example of somebody who built a piece of luggage that kind of follows you based on the Bluetooth signal in your phone. So you just walk around and the, and the thing follows you. Or somebody else, for example, built this, which is a, a distillery you can have in your own house. You can do your own whiskey or whatever at home. And, and again, what, cool, what is cool about this is that you see a URL at the bottom. If you go to instructables.com, you can actually download <coughs> all the plans on how to build this. You can build this thing yourself. And this is another great thing about makers. They share a lot what they do. And this is an artistic project. It's a piece of garment that becomes an interface for a musical instrument. So you ruffle this kind of skirt and you make music. And again, this enables a lot of people to build their own interfaces for musical instruments and other tools without a formal training in electronics. Also, Arduino found its way as the sort of brain behind 3D printers, uh, drones. So this is really cool. So this has been basically 12 years since Arduino started officially. And now I think, you know, 12 years ago, the challenge was how do I teach somebody that has no background in electronics or software how to build something with electronics to build hardware with just very few weeks of training. We even have like workshops where kids in a weekend learn how to build with electronics. How do I apply that to the next challenge? <coughs> the next challenge to me uh, which is probably less sexy than some of the projects that you see, but it's very important for us, is that there is a lot of work that relates to IoT and industrial IoT, or what they call in Europe sometimes Industry 4.0, to just give it another name, which is very complicated for a lot of people, but it's going to be very crucial for a lot of companies, a lot of people, to stay in the market, to create jobs, to you know, improve people's lives. And it, is a, it promises a lot. You know, there are these ideas that by applying these IoT technologies in the industries, you can, by just changing the industry by 1%, you can, you can basically save $90 billion or something. So there's, like, there's going to be like a big impact. And the idea is that you know, it is, there is this perception that it's kind of designed right now for bigger companies. All the technologies is usually quite complex. The platforms are quite complex to use. You require like a serious kind of R&D department in order to do it properly. But I am interested by nature in like the smaller companies, uh, smaller and medium companies. A lot of the people I work with, with makers, they turn their little idea into a company. They they transform themselves into people that can give jobs, that can you know, advance the economy. But you know, how do we help these kind of smaller, you know? And, and there is a tendency right now to look at IoT as more sometimes of a gimmick. Like, you know, uh, there's this nice website called We Put a Chip in It, this idea that you have a stupid product, you just put a chip in it, maybe with the connectivity, and it becomes a smart project. It's not like that, it's much more complicated. But, and we live in a world, just to give an example, where uh, this is just some three countries in, in Europe. Like, for example, Italy, it's been estimated that there are 400,000 manufacturing companies in a country with 60 million people. It means that a lot of these companies are very small. So how do we make those technologies more accessible for everybody? And so a study that's been made is that a lot of companies are now afraid of implementing these kind of technologies because they don't really know how to define a strategy, uh, they don't know how to change the company culture, and also they are worried about hiring talent. And you know, in a way, as the Arduino community, we have seen that we were able to change some of these 
by being bottom up, by somebody building something and then showing up and say, hey, I built this. And this helped change company culture, change uh, how people work, and we think you know, we can help out. But the landscape is complicated. This is a slide built by a venture capitalist in the, in the, in the US. There's a ton of different platforms. It's kind of very hard for people to pick all the different pieces. And it is one of those technologies where you need to become expert at everything just to light up a little lamp. And as I said, these platforms seem to be very complex for most of the people. And now how do we fix this? I don't know. We have a couple of ideas. One of them, are, I'm very passionate about user experience, about the interfaces. If you make an interface simple, a lot of people will be able to use it. I really believe in the fact that you can use edge computing to kind of keep your data and your code closer to you and have more control on it. And obviously, open source. Open source for us is a very big element. It, it allows freedom. Again, you can innovate, and you don't need to ask anybody's permission. There is a quote that I really like about design and user experience is that people ignore design that ignores people. And the other thing that I keep telling people is that, have you ever heard of somebody taking a class to learn how to use Facebook? No. People are very good at using Facebook, and sometimes you give them a work-related software to use, and they say, oh, I will need a training session for this. Because we don't take care of friction. We don't make it simple and smooth for people to use these kind of technologies. And um, so we're trying to build something that's integrated with software and hardware and everything else, which is open source as usual. So we started by making these little modules that are available at different types of connectivity, Wi-Fi, um, Sigfox, LoRa, uh, GSM. So you can place this anywhere you need to interact with something. You need to pick up signals. For example, the Sigfox module is used by a company in Italy for a sensor that measures the size of fruits as they grow on the plant. So the sensor measures the fruit and watches it grow and reports when it's time to go pick it by saving a lot of time and energy from the people who are running this organic um, type of uh, gro growth. And then we try to build a cloud tool where everything you know about Arduino goes into the cloud. So we have an online development environment. So you just need a browser. You log in, and you can code with any Arduino and just deploy it, even through the network. You can also save a lot of information about something you're building right inside the code, so you get instructions on how to build it. We support every single board that you can imagine, and we provide always all, uh, uh, 1,500 different open source libraries for everything. So if you don't know how to build something and you know you need some kind of a sensor, you type the name of that sensor, you press a button, it, you click on it, and you have code. We also built a tool where you can share with other people fully designed projects. So for example, this is a sensor tower uh, that measures air quality. This is a thermostat. You can simply build an IoT device from this tool, put it on this website, and share it with other people. And you get to control these kind of uh, tools from the cloud. You have these different. So one thing that we recently did, which I think is very interesting, we also took this very powerful computer that you have now, which are these. This is an Intel-based up square board. It's essentially like a server in the size of a little you know, box that costs 200 and something euros. But it is like a big server. It contains like a big thing. And we said, OK, why don't we make it simple for people to program this thing using Arduino? So we made some work where you can basically click on a button, and the website will basically set up this mini server for you. You don't have to do anything. The operating system, everything else goes in. You don't need to have any knowledge about Linux to do that. And once you're done with that, you can just give it a name, connect the sensor, and then you can just go and find some code on that project hub that I was describing, and you can compile it. And so now this Arduino code that you learned through different ways, the books, online, magazine, whatever, becomes a Linux application that runs on this big Linux box. So you can use your knowledge to build the complex applications. 
So in this case, it show you some examples of things you can run and deploy through the network. So this box can be anywhere in the world, and you can push data, and you can push multiple of these things online. So this is just a simple example of using a vibration sensor, applying it to, an in, to a piece of hardware. Already, just by measuring the way something vibrates, you can understand if something is working or not working. I, I bet that a bunch of you that are familiar to data centers, I know people that just put hands on services when, when the hard drives were mechanical. They put a hand on the server and say, this thing is not working very well. There are some problems. No? So this is just a simple example of something that can report the information through the cloud. And all of this basically requires zero knowledge of Linux, zero knowledge of the sensor, zero knowledge of electronics. You just follow some instructions, and you build it. And it's becoming full of this project that you can just go online. You see it. You press a button. You copy it, and you use it. So the idea is to provide a ton of these pre-made solutions that people can just go online, read about, click, bring it into their own cloud Arduino environment, write the code, and choose where they want to use it. Do you want to use like one of the small boards, or do you want to use a big Linux machine? No problem. It doesn't matter. Now Arduino runs on all of them. It's all open source. You can try out as well for free. Uh, and you can experiment. And you can basically talk to this device anywhere in the world, and you can communicate. And this is just the beginning. We are trying to build on top of this one piece at the time, a bunch of open source tools that grow from that and will allow, in a space of a few months, anybody with zero experience to build something very complicated without really having to understand all of the aspects, without having to go through like a very complicated process. Because in a way, what I'm trying to do is that I notice that a lot of technologies have this sort of uh, adoption pattern where there is like a big wall in front of you that you have to climb. Well, if you design things in a way that you can take them one step at a time, you learn one bit at a time, you can make a very steep curve into something that's really manageable. And I have seen it. I've seen it with the kind of previous iteration of Arduino. We enable literally anybody anywhere in the world to just do and innovate with electronics. And I really want to enable anybody to be able to innovate with IoT, but applying it to real life scenarios where it impacts the life of people and jobs. You know, there's a lot of funny projects but built with Arduino. No? There, is a, there is a chair that tweets when you fart. This is really funny. It gives you maybe a few thousand views on YouTube, but I don't care about that anymore. I really want to do, use tools that enable people to change their life, to create jobs, to really push the technology forward by increasing the number of people who can innovate. So if you're a developer and want to work with us, I just take one second for this pitch. You can write to us, and, um, and you know, we, can, we are looking for people to work with. And if you're a company and you have an interesting use case, like, for example, this company we're working with that measures the size of fruits as they grow, you know, we want to build a, uh, a pilot project with us. We can give you access to the part of our new technology that I haven't shown you. And it would be fun to work together and, you know, changing the world maybe a little bit and uh, doing something good and fun. Thank you very much.